Hi, and welcome to a video where you're going to get to build your very own gesture recognition system with your very own data. So let's go back to our IPython notebook, the same one from the previous lesson, that's number 16, and let's start that lesson. So firstly, let's create a simple function that makes a directory if it doesn't exist, because more than likely, I may not give you this directory set up by default. I'll still decide later on before I give you guys the file. But in case you want to run this from scratch, it's always good to have this function here. So what we're going to do, we're going to use OpenCV to build our data set. So this is going to be a little bit confusing, this code here. But what it does, if I run this code and you see how it operates, it you should be able to understand what's happening. Basically, the algorithm for this code is that what it does, you hit a button and it starts recording your hand gesture symbol in a region, in a box I highlight on screen, through your webcam. And what I'd like you to do is move your, your symbol in many different directions, go in, go out, tilt it left, right, pan across the frame. And then what did, and then you hit, well, enter actually is a key, a command when you're finished. And then you do it again for the second symbol. And then you hit enter when finished. Oh, sorry, actually you train, you collect first the training data, then collect some test data, collect some training data, then some test data, and then you hit enter to exit. So watch me do it first before you guys do it. And you'll see how it's done, how we collect our very own data. However, I do have instructions on screen, so it's not super difficult to follow. So let's run this here, okay? I'm just gonna lower my microphone a bit and move it out of this scene. So hopefully it doesn't bother you guys too much. All right. Okay, so let's run off webcam collector. So what's gonna happen here is follow instructions. You have to keep your hand in here, symbol from the beginning, first of all, and hit enter when ready. So what we do, I'm gonna hit enter now, and now we're recording. The number below you see is the samples we're recording. So I'm just moving this around, tilting it back and forth just to get some good images. Now, usually what I'll do, I'll stop when I reach 500, roughly. Okay, almost, there we go. Now, what I'm doing here, I'm recording now the test data. So our test data is supposed to be a little different, not too different. And there we go. So I'm recorded 100 and something, 150 to 200 test data, while I recorded 500 training data. So that's actually not too bad. Now let's do a symbol like this. And I'll hit, this is our second symbol. We're only trailing it for two symbols today. You can adapt this code to train it to for multiple symbols if you wanted to, okay? So let's go. So let's train it on our training data, which is a fist, basically. I'm not entirely sure what I'll call this symbol. Maybe like yes or no, maybe. And when we reach 500, let's just go back, tilt it back in front. Let's go to the file on the screen. Okay, so let's now train the test data. So testing, testing, tilting. Trying to be a little different, maybe. Okay, that should be enough. And hit enter to exit. So what we've done there, we have just collected our test and training data set. So if you want to inspect it, let's see what happens here. So let's take a look at the folders we created before looking to file manager. You can see you created some folders called hand gestures training zero, hand gestures test zero, hand gestures train one, hand gestures test one. Okay. That directory setup here is the default directory setup that Keras uses. Uh, you can take a look here. I'm just going to drag my file Windows Explorer here. You can see you get hand gestures here, and you can see there's two folders, test and train. That's the default directory setup Keras uses. You can actually call this anything you want. You'll often see it called validation in some cases. Uh, let's take a look. Um, each class of image has to be stored in its own folder and given a label. Typically, we use numerical labels, 0, 1, and so on. 0 is our first hand symbol here. You can see this, I can't really see too much. We can probably zoom in a lot. Uh, you can see my face in the image here, but that's generally how it looks. And you can see all the 500 something images we created here and all the different variations, all stored as a 28 by 28 pixel grayscale image. Similarly, we have our other fist looking symbol. Let's just zoom into this one here. So. You know, this is just our own data set. If you wanted to collect this for, to make it a really, really robust CNN, you would collect from different people, different backgrounds, different size fists, blah, blah, blah. So you can just take a look at also at the test data set here. 
Similarly, you can see those changes to this style. You can see all the test images here. So now that we have our data set, we're going to use Keras's data augmentation now to enhance our data set. Now, data augmentation is the ability to take one single image, like images we trained in our fist, and put so many different slide variations like this here into our training data set so that every time we do our training sampling, we're making variations or edits like this to our original image. This way, we actually add a lot more. It's a way of we can actually increase or theoretically increase the amount of data we have without actually having that data. So now moving back to our code, you can just see we follow our imports, number of classes, we set our image dimensions here. Normally we can actually take it directly from the image, but we just do it manually here, set our bat size as 2D2. You know, we're a bit all over the place with our bat sizes for the same size images here, just giving you different examples for different systems, what it could be. We set validation directory and our training data directory here to the folder we created in our base directory, hand gestures train, hand gestures test. And this is a part where we actually specify the data augmentation parameters. So we always set a rescaling here. This is general rescaling to make it between zero and one. We can do our rotation range. We know what rotation is. You can do our width shift that's moving it left and right, height shift up and down horizontal flip, you can flip it around to reverse it. Just that's quite useful in this case, in case your webcam inverted. However, because the sign language data set relies on orientation, you should just put a note below or somewhere. You can remember this note. This isn't probably a good idea. So you may want to make sure your data that comes in is the same data that comes in from the webcam so that you actually don't do this. So actually, in reality, I'm going to make this false, it's not going to impact our, actually I'll leave it as true for now, but just so you know, it's not going to impact our binary classifier very much. So that's why I'm leaving it as true. You don't do any data augmentation on your validation data set, except for rescaling. This is the, what we want to do the, res the augmentation on. And then what you do, you create generators here. So what we do, remember we imported something here called image data generator. Actually we imported it twice. That's redundant. So remove this one. Uh, but yeah, so we have image data generator here. That's where this function comes from. All right, here. And this creates this object here. And what this does here, train data gen, is we, we take the images from the directory we were pointing it to. And it's a generator pointing to that, those images here. And we just have to specify some different parameters here where we have the bat size, the target size, color mode, class mode. Just make sure these are consistent for both training and validation. And we just run this code here. So it's not super difficult. Just try to follow the same orientation, same like boilerplate code that you see here. So now let's create our model. We're going to use the same model as we did before. So let's just run this and I print out model summary before. You can see it's 82,000 parameters. And now we're just going to compile this model using a different optimizer, RMS prop. We're going to use binary cross entropy. Again, same metrics. And notice we actually manually put in these samples here. The samples come from here. Actually, this is different sets of samples to what we did before. So please note that when you're actually doing this on your own, you're going to want to update it with your own values here. So otherwise, it's going to return an error. Okay, so now let's run this model. Okay, shouldn't take too long. You can see it's quite quick. You're taking a bit longer than I expected, but I'll fast forward the video for this when it's complete. Okay, so we're complete here with our training and see our validation accuracy is 90%, so that's quite good. So now let's just save our model like we usually do, and let's reload our model here just to make sure we have it. And what we're going to do, we're going to actually use now the same code we did before to test our model to see how good it looks. So Notice I spelled scaled wrong here. Let's run this code and check it out. Okay, so let me just get my microphone out of the way. Okay, so that's class zero. That's correct. Class one, zero, one. Let's see if it works consistently. It's not super consistent at all the time. It's pretty consistent here. Let's do this. Zero works well. Looks remarkably well so far. Very few fluctuations from zero. Okay, so it's pretty good. It's only when it goes in the upper corner here. Maybe my training data for this one wasn't too much. 
But overall, this model that has been is working pretty good. So I just have this extra code here in case this code above ever crashes, you actually can use this sometimes just to close your OpenCV screen and get back to webcam. Forget about it for now. What I must say though is that you can see you just created your own model and it worked far better than the other model before that was using the MNIST American Sign Language Dataset. You've just now created your own model from scratch using your own data. And this is a very good example project to carry you forward for your very own projects that you want to implement, especially using data augmentation to enhance those smaller data sets that you might have. So now let's just recap what we've learned. We've learned how to use OpenCV to collect out and generate our very own data set. We've learned to use data augmentation and how it works. We've created our own model using the same CNN we used before, and we've tested this model to fairly good success. So now let's move on to something pretty cool, which is facial recognition with deep learning. So stay tuned for the next video.